If you're a NASCAR driver today, you better hide your kids, hide your wife, lock them doors because there's a whole army of drivers that could be coming for your ride. How's it going everybody? My name is Eric and welcome to Out of the Groove. We have yet another major driver announcement that has again sent major ripples throughout the NASCAR silly season rumor mill. Ryan Newman announced today that he will not be returning to Richard Childress Racing next year to drive that 31. This was a rumor that recently had started to gain some traction. There are rumors that he could leave the team to go somewhere else. Some reports said that he was going to stay with RCR, uh, but clearly now it's all out in the open. It's from the horse's mouth directly. Uh, our Richard, Child or Richard Childress Racing will not have Ryan Newman driving for him next year. Ryan Ryan Newman's 40 years old. You know, it's been a couple years since we've seen him in the playoffs, but in his five years with RCR, he's won a race. He's been to the playoffs three times. And remember 2014, he almost pulled off that upset and won the championship. So the years there have not been terrible. He missed the playoffs this year, but you know, he's a consistent driver still who can drive in the mid teens most weeks and, you know, at least keep your car mostly clean for the most part. So he's still a good driver. He's an established veteran presence. You know, his best years are behind him for sure, uh, but he's still well known and, and relatively well respected, I think. But with this report coming out, as well as a couple days ago, Jack. Jack Roush announced Trevor Bain will not be in the six car next year. With all these new reports coming out, there is even more rumors to go off of. There's even more speculation to be had. Uh, and so today, this hopefully will be my last big silly season video that I make, although these are fun to speculate, these are fun to talk about because we still have more questions than we have answers. But in this video, I'm gonna look at some of the most notable rides still available, and I'm gonna look at some of the big name free agents because there's a few huge name free agents still out there. And I'm gonna kind of try to connect some dots and we're gonna, we're gonna talk through where these guys will likely end up and which car will be filled by which driver. So let's do that. Here's a list of some of the biggest name uh, free agents uh, going into next season. You have Ryan Newman now, Kurt Busch, Jamie McMurray, Matt DiBenedetto, Trevor Bain, and of course Martin Truex Jr. Now I know there's been tons of rumors and reports. It was reported that Kurt Busch is going to the one car, which still seems to be the most likely. Uh, there's rumors and reports that Truex is going to go to the 19, which still seems likely. But these are still not confirmed by the teams or the drivers themselves, so we have to assume it's still rumors up to this point. And now while these are some of the confirmed free agents, there's a lot of other drivers that have kind of, you know, felt the ripple effect from this that could also end up being free agents that we haven't talked about as much yet. Other possible free agents include Daniel Suarez, Matt Kenseth, AJ Allmendinger, Chris Buescher, Daniel Hemrick, Cole Custer, or even Ryan Priest or Ross Chastain. These are guys, and there's even some others that I probably don't even have on these lists that could end up getting one of these cars that we've been talking about that's just, these guys are kind of flying under the radar a little bit more. We don't, they're not planned to be free agents this year, although JTG Doherty has talked about how they might consider a major lineup change next year. That's why I have Allmendinger and Buescher up here. Obviously, the reports with Truex possibly going to the 19 would mean Suarez would effectively be a free agent. Matt Matt Kenseth is, uh, you know, running part-time this year. We have no, he's given no indication as to whether or not he wants to race again next year. So he, but his name's still up there. And then you got a lot of guys who are currently in the Xfinity series who have been somewhat linked to possibly going to some of these cars. So those are all of your free agents kind of that we're looking at. Or those are at least the biggest ones, the most high profile ones, the ones that people are discussing the most. So now we got to look at the cars that are available because there's some good rides still left. We have the one car for Chip Ganassi Racing, the six for Roush Fenway. We have the 41 car for the Stuart Haas Racing. You have the 32, go fast. You have the 31 now with RCR. You have the 95 with the Levine Family Racing now that Kane is retiring. And now a couple others I'll throw in here because they're not uh, confirmed to be free agent cars, but these are also openings that are being considered widely. The 37 and the 47 for JTG, and I'll go and throw the 19 uh, that's currently driven by Daniel Suarez on there as well. So now that I've thrown all this information at you, I kind of want to try and organize it, and I want to give you guys my predictions as to who's going to go to which car. Uh, a lot of these are all purely speculations. A few that we have hard-nosed reports on that seem pretty legit, uh, but up to this point, there's a lot of these that involve a lot of speculation. So I'm going to go through each of these cars, and I'm going to tell you exactly what driver I think is going to end up racing in that car in 2019. I'll start with some of the more obvious reported ones. The number one car I think will be driven by Kurt Busch next year. It was reported uh, just a couple weeks ago that he was going to be going to that car. Kurt Busch has come out since then and said he's weighing uh, multiple contract offers, but this seems pretty likely uh, that Chip Ganassi Racing number one car is going to be driven by Kurt Busch. Uh, I'm going to bleed the reports. I, I look at some of these other ones available. I mean, he's leaving the 41 car, which is already like the, probably the best car in this, you know, of the of all the ones listed here. So he's leaving the best car. The next best car on that list is maybe the one or maybe the 19, but the one car seems the most likely. Uh, so I think he ends up at the one car for, for Chip Ganassi Racing. Kurt Busch 
I, I'm, I'm very confident about that choice. Another one I can say I'm pretty confident in is the 19 uh, that's currently driven by Daniel Suarez, but I'm pretty confident that next year that will be Martin Truex Jr. The reports that have come out seem very legit. You know, people in the national media have been talking about how likely it is that Martin Truex Jr. and Cole Pern will leave the 78 to go to the 19. So if you if you missed it, Furniture Row Racing is closing down after this year, uh, unfortunately, so Truex and a lot of those guys are out of a job, uh, but it seems like the defending champion and his crew chief are likely to find a home at JGR. Uh, so yes, 19, I'm pretty sure will be driven by Truex. Now beyond those two, things get a little more interesting, or at least a little less predictable, I feel like. I really have no basis for a lot of these predictions I'm about to be making, but I'm going to try and make some sense of it. I'll start with that number six car for Roush Fenway Racing. Uh, currently that car is being driven part-time by Trevor Bain and Matt Kenseth. Jack Roush announced earlier this week that Trevor Bain will be gone from that car, will not be racing for them next year, which uh, had kind of been pretty predictable. Most people have been expecting that for a few months now. But now it's confirmed. Matt Kenseth was asked earlier this uh, week or last week uh, whether or not he would want to return next year to the sixth car and he his, he his quote was basically he hasn't given it any thought which is kind of what he said last year and he ended up not with a ride at the end of the year so I'm a little skeptical that Matt Kenseth is going to come back next year it seems unlikely so with today's announcement and some of the other rumors I've heard churning about uh, I think Ryan Newman might be your best bet to end up in that number six car. I look at some of the others here. He's leaving the 31 car, which has not been as good as it used to be the last few years. RCR is not as good as it once was when they had Harvick and, and Paul Menard and Ryan Newman. That was kind of like when they were better. Obviously, they were worse than they were way back in the day when they had like Dale Earnhardt and everything, but still. He's leaving an okay race car. You know, I look at some of these other ones that are available. I doubt he's going to go to the 41. You know, he's, he's driven for Stuart Haas before. He and Tony Stewart have not had the best run in since then, so I don't think that's likely. And the other important thing to mention is that Ryan Newman's announcement uh, this weekend and it wasn't that he's leaving or that he's being forced out of the ride. He gave the impression that he was choosing to leave RCR because he thinks there's a better opportunity available. Now, I'm not sure that the six car is much better or any better than that 31 car, but as we saw this last weekend in Indianapolis, you know, when you have a competent driver behind the wheel, sometimes you can have a great race. I mean, Kenseth had a top five car last week. So that six car might be on the upswing. You know, they're switching to the Mustang next year. Maybe things will look good. So I think that's the closest thing you can get to an upgrade on this list that isn't the 41 car. And I, I don't think JGR is going to want him in the 19. I don't I don't really think Ganassi's going to put him in the one. That seems like it's Kurt Busch's car. So I think Ryan Newman is destined to get the third or fourth best car on this list. And that's probably the sixth car for, you know, driving for a storied, historic, uh, you know, successful organization in Roush Fenway Racing. I think that makes a lot of sense to me. So I'm going to put Ryan Newman in the six. Uh, and spoiler alert, I think both Trevor Bain and Matt Kenseth, I don't think either of them will race next year in the Cup Series. I think they're both effectively done. Trevor Bain maybe gets a ride in a small team. I think Matt Kenseth basically calls it calls it a career after this year. Uh, but that's, uh, that, that's what I'm thinking there. I think Newman goes to the six. Looking at the 41 car, which is probably the fastest, you know, best car on this list. I mean, Kurt Busch is in the playoffs. He's won, he's won a race this year. He's driving for Stuart Haas, which is one of the best teams. So 41 is going to be a highly coveted position. This is going to be a really interesting one. There's been rumors even that Truex could go to this car, although it seems pretty sure that he's going to go to the 19 at this point. Could Daniel Suarez get this car? I'm skeptical. You know, he's been in the Toyota family for so long now, and he's been in a good car in that 19 and not seen great success. So I doubt he's going to get an upgrade, really, I, unless he just suddenly brings in tons of sponsors sponsorship out of nowhere, but I don't expect that, so I don't think he's going to get an upgrade. Matt DiBenedetto left Go Fast Racing uh, just a few weeks ago, announced that, and so there's rumors that he could get a good opportunity like this. A lot of people seem to believe that DiBenedetto, if given uh, a good opportunity, could compete for wins. This would be an outstanding opportunity. But all these people I just named, I'm not feeling it. One thing that's notable about Stuart Haas Racing this season is they're the only team in the garage that has four full-time, established veteran drivers driving for their race team. You got Clint Boyer, who's won a lot of races, looks like a title contender. You got Harvick, who's won a title and is obviously probably one of the favorites this year. You got Kurt Busch, who's won a title. And then you got Eric Almarola, who just took over for Danica Patrick and is having his best year of his career. You got four established veteran drivers that gotta be eating up a lot of salary. And you look at these other big teams. Tendrick Motorsports has let some of its veteran drivers walk away in favor of young guys. You look at Joe Gibbs Racing has let Edwards, Kenseth, their veterans walk away in favor of young guys. That's been the trend for all these big, big organizations, and I just find it hard to believe that Stuart Haas Racing is going to want to keep on four big name drivers. I don't think they're going to want to bring in a Newman. I don't think they're going to want to bring in a McMurray. They're losing Kurt Busch, who's pretty darn good as it is. I think they're going to take a chance on a young guy, and what's the best young guy in SHR's current Xfinity system? That is Cole Custer. Cole Custer, we don't talk about a whole lot. You know, he's a good Xfinity driver. I wouldn't necessarily say he's a top Xfinity driver, but he's a guy who a lot of people think has is going to get a shot in the Cup Series at some point. And if you ask me, I think that, that shot 
might come sooner rather than later. I think Cole Custer is going to get the promotion, and he's going to end up in the 41 next year. And, and we'll see if he thrives like an Eric Jones or a Chase Elliott, or if he struggles sort of like we've seen. I guess it's a little too early to say, but we've seen you know William Byron struggle or Daniel Suarez struggle. Uh, time will tell, but I think Cole Custer goes to the 41. I'll pick up the pace a little bit. The 31 car is now open after today's announcement that Ryan Newman is going to be leaving RCR. So who's going to go to that car? There's rumors that Ty Dillon could go to that car, even though I think he just signed an extension with uh, Jermaine Racing. But they are an affiliate team uh, with uh, RCR. So perhaps, you know, he could still make the switch to RCR if Richard Childress wanted him to. And that's not entirely impossible because Ty Dillon, while he hasn't really done much in that 13 car, you know, he is, you know, the grandson of Richard Childress, just like Austin Dillon is, who's driving the three car currently. So, you know, it, it might look, it might look kind of bad if he just hires his two grandsons to race for him that might look kind of bad uh, but at the same time it, it you know it'd be fun for him I guess and you know maybe he would do it that's one possibility another possibility is Daniel Hemrick who's in the RCR system currently in the Xfinity series and he's had a good year he's been on the upswing looking pretty solid a lot of rumors is that he should get a cup ride in the near future he's driven a couple X or cup races already this season in that eight car for RCR so that's a real real possibility this is a tough one to predict because I think both those guys have a very good chance of getting this car but the guy I actually am picking to go to the 31. Maybe not as expected. He doesn't really have a connection to the RCR team, uh, but he is a driver who's got a lot of potential according to people within the industry. He's a driver who's, I'd say, overachieved in some of the equipment he's been driving lately. I think Matt DiBenedetto has a very good possibility of ending up in that 31 car next year. He's been driving a Ford, you know, not affiliated with RCR in any way, but I just think maybe now's the chance to just kind of Take a shot at it, you know? There's not a lot of good cars available, and I think the 31's a pretty decent car, at least. You know, this could be De Benedetto's shot. When De Benedetto announced that he was leaving Go Fast Racing, he indicated that he didn't really have a set plan going forward. He just was kind of throwing his name out there and hoping somebody picked him up. This could be an opportunity for RCR to possibly pick up. You never know. He could be the next big thing. You know, we really don't know. I think he's slightly overachieved in that car he's been in, so who knows what he could do in a 15th place car. Maybe he could make the playoffs. I think that's a good possibility. The number 95 was driven by Casey Kane this year. He's been out the last couple weeks and will likely be out the next few uh, with dehydration issues that he's had, especially after Darlington. So a uh, really unfortunate situation there. He's already announced that he's stepping away from racing from NASCAR at the end of this season. So that 95 car is open. And this one I'll be pretty quick. The rumors have been saying that they're going to switch to Toyota, possibly in a line with Joe Gibbs Racing. If that is the case, which I think it will be, I think Daniel Suarez ends up going to the 95. You know, he's been in the 19 this year. Uh, he, this way he stays kind of under the Toyota slash Gibbs umbrella. Uh, but let's be honest, he has not performed as well as he needs to in that 19 to likely keep that ride, especially in such a competitive era in NASCAR where there's a lot of guys gunning for these top cars. And Suarez hasn't really done enough to earn that ride, in my opinion. It's tough to say that because I really like Daniel Suarez. And I hope he gets the 95 because I think they could still be a somewhat competitive team next year and he could run in the top 15 sometimes and have some decent runs in there. Uh, but I don't think he's going to get to stay in the 19. I think Daniel Suarez will end up in the 95, especially if they switch to Toyota. I think it'll be a done deal at that point. Last few to look at, JTG Doherty Racing. You know, they haven't confirmed that Almendinger or Chris Busch are going to be leaving those cars, but there's been a ton of rumors about Ryan Priest, who's currently in the uh, JGR Xfinity system doing some part-time races. You know, he recently had a sponsorship deal with Craftsman Tools that's uh, been beneficial to him. I've seen multiple reports now that say that uh, Ryan Priest will likely be in one of those cars next year, maybe the 37, maybe the 47. Uh, I tend to think there's a better chance he'll go to the 47, replacing AJ Almendinger, who might unfortunately be kind of out of luck. Chris Buescher is still young and he did win a lot in the Xfinity series when he drove for Roush, so he's clearly got some talent if he's given good equipment. I think they'll keep him in there for at least a little bit while longer, but I think Ryan Priest could likely end up in the 47. So Chris Bush and Ryan Priest will likely be your JTG drivers, if you ask me, next year. Last one on the list is the 32 car. It's the one big car I haven't talked about, De Benedetto's car that he's in now, he's leaving. Who goes to go fast racing? It's a downgrade for pretty much any of these other cars. You know, maybe Jamie McMurray ends up there because right now I don't really have a place for Jamie McMurray. You know, maybe somebody else, one of these young guys, maybe Almondinger ends up there. Maybe an x guy gets that shot like Hemrick or, or somebody else. But I, I have some other names like I mentioned back there, like Ross Chastain, who's been driving for Chip Ganassi this year in that 42 car and uh, a couple of x races and has looked really good. Uh, he's a guy that everyone seems to think can make a non-competitive car look decent. Uh, so maybe a guy like that gets one of these cars, but I don't even know if they'd want that deal. 32 car, I'll be honest, I have no predictions for it. Just give it some question marks. Could be McMurray, could be anybody. I do not know. I, I, I don't. But yeah, there you have it. Those are my predictions for 2019. 
a lot of speculation out there. This this could either be 100% right or 0% right in a couple weeks. You know, we might have a couple new cars. Somebody else could suddenly step away with unexpectedly and we could have to redo this whole thing. Interesting tip in, you know, some people have been speculating about Jimmy Johnson out he's sponsorless still for next season. Uh, he recently said that he is planning to race next year, you know, so he will be back. I don't think he's going to retire at the end of this year. So I think those rumors can kind of die out. But yeah, this is going to be an interesting off season to see how much of this actually happens. Uh, Really, after the 78 team shut down, all bets are off. This has been the silliest NASCAR season I've ever seen. And uh, it's showing no indication of slowing down. So anyway, there you have it. That is my show. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this type of video, be sure to hit subscribe because I upload uh, Out of the Groove episodes every couple times a week, every week. So uh, definitely be sure to check those out. You can follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on Instagram. Links to those are down in the description. Uh, you can become a Patreon sponsor of the show like these amazing sponsors right here. If you want to find out how you can support me directly, you can click that top link down below. I really appreciate the support from you guys and I appreciate you guys taking the time to check that out. So yeah, that's all I have. Hope you guys enjoy the race tomorrow, the first race of the playoffs. I know this is a non-playoffs related video right when we start the playoffs, but I had to talk about it because this is big and I wanted to get a little bit more of my opinions out there. I like to fuel the fire. I like to hear what you guys have to say because sometimes you guys lob in good suggestions like, oh, I didn't consider him driving that car, but it makes a lot of sense. So I appreciate hearing what you guys have to say and I hope you enjoyed hearing what I had to say. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you after, uh, I'll see you tomorrow, probably after the race. Bye guys.